is Carcamo, the forger of pain. I'm a pro wrestler from the Panama Republic with over 10 years of experience in the business. I became a gamer thanks to my father who gave me an Atari 2600. I've decided to share my passion with the world and spread my love for horror, anime, and good vibes to infinity and beyond. Welcome to Carcamo Gaming. Being a retro game collector in my country, it's not easy. At the end of the 90s and early 2000s, in Panama, there were two scenarios. When you wanted to get to the new SNES and jump a console generation, for the most part, our parents gave away the older console to the maid or they just threw it away. Yup, most parents in Panama did that. Best case scenario, they would store the console in a box in your grandparents' house, never to be opened again. When I started collecting seriously a little over a decade ago, I found out these stories were pretty common. So this is why finding a retro game in Panama is nearly impossible. I had two options, buy it on eBay, which is practical but not the cheapest way by any means. Or take advantage each time I was hired to wrestle overseas and do some game hunting. And exactly that is what we're doing today, kiddies, in this kark adventure with the Forger of Pain in Los Angeles, California. We'll visit one of the best and most complete video game stores called Game Dude! My friends and I celebrate our arrival as if we were in Disneyland. This has always been an obligatory stop to this magnificent place. I feel like a kid in a toy store! This place is huge! That's what she said. With games and consoles from all generations. Inside, I lose my breath. And I don't know where do I even begin. <sighs> but after a few moments, I take a deep breath and organize my thoughts. I love how everything is well placed with sections for every gaming brand. One of the highlights for me was the PlayStation 2 section, where I found one of my favorite games, Indigo Prophecy, also known as Fahrenheit in Europe. that caught my attention was overlooking all the displays and promotional material for Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and Arcade. And let me tell you, they have a few cabinets that deserve your quarter. After a while, I already knew what I wanted. I'm always looking for Japanese games, so I went straight ahead to the Famicom and Super Famicom section which is the NES and SNES in Japan. Everyone is here with great titles from NES, Super Nintendo, and N64, or the Ultra 64, as I used to call it. Find only on Nintendo Ultra 64. The first console I ever owned in my life wasn't lagging. I'm talking about the Atari 2600. So I took a couple of games to Panama. Games that I had lost in 1986 when I was 4 years old. I don't know if you remember the UMD. It was a weird video format that Sony tried to popularize on the PSP. Anyway, this section was also full of games and movies. Alright, I don't collect for the PC Engine, aka TurboGrafx-16, because it's too friggin' expensive. Nevertheless, 
this console was also well represented with a couple of Sega CD titles. This part of the store left me what? Because there were one dollar games. Yes, one buck. And I even found a Madden for 10 cents! <laughs> there is so much to talk about, but there is no time. Also, in the store, you'll find peripherals, joysticks, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Game Gear, DS, 3DS games, etc, etc, etc. In conclusion, guys, I can only say, get your shit together and take care of yourselves. God willing, 2021, Game Dude, we'll see each other once again.